London is a little rural town located 62 kilometres driving distance from the Sydney CBD. It's quite a little town that is popular with car and motorcycle enthusiasts to meet up before heading off on a drive ride for the day. Initially surrounded by farmland, it's quite a little town with some older buildings, but change is coming, Sydney's second airport. Hey everyone, welcome to Roads Boz. My name is Matt. So what's the intro got to do with my channel? Well, like the town of Ludnam, change is coming, especially to my channel. For a while now, I've been contemplating getting an adventure bike. It started when I was at Hill End and wanting to ride the bridle track. If I ever get an adventure tourer, I can promise you the first video I do will be on the bridle track. It's on my bucket list of things to do. And even last year, on the first day of my big trip, I was riding about 40 kilometres along an unsealed road on the Grisso. All I could think of is how nice it would be to be on a more suitable bike and enjoying this road instead of feeling like I was battling it. I put this plan into action last year by selling my Honda CB125E and later in the year both the Project Aprilia scooters. In between selling all those bikes, I had money put away until a deal on a Kawasaki GBZ 750 come up that was too good not to take up. This put my plans for a cheap adventure bike slash commuter bike back by a few months. I was planning on buying a KLR 650, but after riding the Aprilia Torre, my plans have changed yet again. I'm all like it. I've decided to go with a more modern bike, and this is where my dilemma lies. Initially, I was planning on buying a large touring bike with panniers so my wife and I could go out riding together. But the reality is, she won't be coming out often enough to justify the purchase of that bike. And in all honesty, I love hitting the bends on roads a bit quicker than what a large bagger would cope with. And also, the Grisso, or even the GPZ, would cope with two-up duties, as I wouldn't need it that frequently. So back to the adventure bike dilemma. After another year of only riding the Husberg T300 twice, once at Motocross Park, and the other time to go into work, which is what you're seeing now, the Berg is a horrible road bike. And it's no surprise, as it's not designed for roads. So after two rides and spending almost $1,000 on running costs, I realised it's not a great financial decision to keep it. So I've made the easy decision to sell it. And if I don't sell it, I'm going to let Rego run out and just use it at motocross parks and maybe register it if the need arises. But in all honesty, I'd like to sell it and use that money to go towards an adventure bike. Now my next dilemma, what bike to buy? How much am I prepared to spend? There are some amazing bikes in this category of adventure bikes and I've ridden a lot of them. I'm hoping to make a decision by February and in the meantime, I plan to test ride as many as possible. Sometimes this makes choosing one even harder. Should I get a more off-road focus Pretty bike fun. like the Yamaha Tenere or the Pura Tori? Should I be honest with myself and get a more road focus bike that can handle off-road like the Triumph Tiger, the Moto Guzzi V85 TT? Or the Husqvarna Norden? Do I get a bike that could potentially do everything from daily commuting to replacing the Grisso? Bikes like the BMW GS or Ducati Desert X come to mind. The last time that I had such a dilemma purchasing a bike was when I was looking at buying a sports bike, which was way back in 2005. Like this time, compromises have to be made on things like price and also the looking back factor. It took me months to finally make a decision on a bike back then, it come down to price, and for those of the wondering, I ended up buying the Aprilia RSV 1000R, as it was marked down by about $6,000 and the trade-in was excellent on my 2001 Ducati 750SS. The last bike that I purchased was a no-brainer, it was my Grisso, and I knew I wanted that bike the moment it was wheeled out onto the showroom floor. It's probably why I've had it for eight years, and the thought of selling it makes me sad. But it may have to be done. Anyway, you can expect to see a lot of test ride videos in the future, and I'll give my thoughts on what I liked and disliked about the bike, and whether I'd consider adding it to my garage. So I hope you'll stay with me on this little journey. Also, if you haven't done so already, hit the like button. If you want to see how I go test riding more adventure bikes over the next few months, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.